the next talk, which is Eduardo Dalavin, uh, talking about testing the reliability of sedimentary paleomagnetic data set for paleogeographic reconstructions. Uh, take it away, Eduardo. Oh, can, can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Perfect. So my last name is Dallanave. I know, sorry, it's Italian, no worry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm used to that. So can you see my screen? Yeah, we can. Perfect. Let me just um, do this. Yeah, okay. So I want to talk to you about, um, it's basically a paper just got, just got published um, a few weeks ago. And is yeah, it's about how can we possibly test the reliability of sedimentary paleomagnetic data set because, um, I mean, sediments for the temporal and the spatial distribution are very important for paleogeographic reconstruction. So we wanna be sure that the data we use are reliable. And why? So for people that were listening to me last year, they may, might remember that I was talking about um, New Caledonia. So some sedimentary data set Paleomagnetic sedimentary data set from New Caledonia. And they're very good in terms of magnetostratigraphy. So the direction themselves are reliable. They appear reliable at least, but we have a problem, especially about the inclination. The inclination is not fitting with the expected one. And so we have something to say. I will say something about the anisotropy of magnetic susceptibility. So is there a way to assess the reliability of these? Um, data. So the problem start really is not purely theoretical. It starts from real data. And um, how do we do that? We wanted to investigate the effects of finite strain on simulated distribution, and we see different cases. And then there's what do we learn from that? What we see in the end. So it's just to see the outline of the presentation. So it's just a bit of. Let me just set up. Uh, the frame, the geographic frame, New Caledonia is in the is a small island in the southwest Pacific. So it's a it's a portion of the Norfolk Ridge. So all this continent that you see here is called Zealandia and it's mostly submerged. But it's quite important for understanding the dynamics of the, um, the subduction initia initiation of the Pacific plate beneath the Australian plate. So since there is not much cropping out, so, so you either go and drill as we did with um, IODP expedition, or you study whatever is cropping out. And New Caledonia is just uh, one of the few places where you can study these sediments. And there is a section in particular in the northern part of the Nile of the island where there is this transition between pelagic uh, micro, so carbonate sediment onto a submarine plateau to turbidites. And it's, um, this transition is important in terms of the regional um, geology and evolution. But if we focus on the lower part of the section, we have a beautiful data set. There is also some extra slides if you want with some Zydeberg so you can show, you can see them. So we have reversals, we have very um, um, consistent uh, declination, inclination. And the age model is quite clear. So the age is about 48 million of years ago around this age. And so the data set itself, it does look reliable, especially if we take the direction. We don't take the direction from the turbidites because they're not as good as the lower part. So we just want to focus with a good data set. And we have a total of 88, I didn't put the number here, but 88 directions, uh, positive reversal test. We use a bootstrap approach other than the normal, the traditional reversal tests usually, they, um, they assume that the directions are Fisher distributed. That's not always the case. So with this bootstrap approach, I'm not going through the details, but you overcome this limitation. But the, the reversal test is positive. And we can see here that we have um, the data set with the bedding plane. If we, if we look at the data set in tilted corrected, uh, coordinates, just look at the blue one. So it's uh, the blue reference line. 
they're clearly more, the inclination is higher, is a lot higher, like something about 10 degrees higher than the one that we expect calculated from the compilation of Torsvik. And, but we also know that there is a, um, we measure the anisotropy of magnetic sensitivity and it's not um, sedimentary. So if you look at the, the plane that lie between K1 and K2 is not coincided with the sedimentary plane. So there is clearly like something that ring about in terms of the reliability of the day. In terms of paleogeography, that's what we see. So this is New Caledonia, this is a paleomagnetic pole, is rotated compared to the, the position that we would expect, but we know that because New Caledonia itself is rotated. So it fits with, um, with the structural frame. Oh, sorry. But the inclination is, so the paleomagnetic pole is clearly off. It's also true that the compilation of Torvik, Torvik used data from other continents, mostly. There's only one entry with this, within this time window all the other data are coming from other continents and they go through multiple rotations. Um, this is the paleo latitude that we calculate with our data. This is the paleogeographic and so global reconstruction, let's say, and it's clearly off. So where is the problem? Is the problem in the compilation or in our data? We know that, uh, yeah, there is like a kind of region, regional compression, but the, the straight are not heavily folded. So there's no indication of like heavily deformed strata that, that you can like assume that the data are not reliable. So if you look at the literature, there are different phenomena that could deviate your directions from the original position. The first one, the, the well-known one, is the inclination flattening. Uh, if we measure the susceptibility of the anisotropy of the susceptibility in this condition, we would have a, an oblate tensor. And then as we start the form in the strata a bit more, we can imagine a north-south compression folding direction pointing to the north. We start having different um, fabrics, like the weak cleavage fabric will result in an anisotropy magnetic sensitivity prolate in shape. And then the more extreme condition with strong cleavage, strong cleavage, and we would have a triaxial. And this is the theoretical evolution of the inclination that is being published in some, pa some old papers. So you could have either, uh, depending on the flank, on the limb of the fall you are, you could have shallowing or steeping. So now uh, we know, and Andy was talking about that before, the, the direction distribution, uh, we know that they're not Fisherian, but they, they're a bit more complex. So one of the models that's put for, put for war in the last few years is um, TKO3. One of the assumptions is that the VGPs are circular and that results in a specific site. The direction are not circular, but they are elliptical. And the elongation is calculated using the ratio between these two um, eigenvalues. So we simulated a, so, um, a set of directions for different latitude, they are drawn accordingly to this model. So in this case, we have the inclination here and the elongation, and we see that it varies depending on the inclination, which in turn depends on the latitude. And this method has been applied in the past for correcting for the inclination flattening, for example. So we gradually can uh, increase this, the, the inclination or set of direction, uh, and the elongation vary until it crosses the expected values. So this, for example, this is the same data set that has been corrected using this idea for inclination flattening. So what we did is try to figure out how not just inclination flattening, but other mechanisms could change the shape of the distribution. So we started with a circular distribution for two reasons. It's easier to visualize and second is not necessarily far away from the reality because if we sample one single strata, we are not expecting to average, averaging out the circular variation. So we would have a Fisherian distribution, which is not far away from a circle. So we apply different scenarios to this uh, circular distribution, which is inclination of 50 degrees and radius of 30 degrees. We apply first a flattening and then just a pure shear um, simulation. And what we see, for example, in this, this, this is the diagram where we see the inclination and the elongation 
this orange area is the area where you would have directions that are only affected by inclination flattening. So they are potentially, they potentially can be corrected with, with the method um, that we saw before. Everything that falls here is not reliable. So it's clearly affected by some problem. And yeah, what we see is that when you apply a, a pure shear, we immediately jump to condition that is not realistic anymore. But it's not entirely realistic. So we wanted to, we know that um, we also have folding. So what we have to do is also apply a folding to the data. What we do is just apply a minimum tilting of the strata and then we apply the pure shear to both the direction and the bedding. And we get into a situation that is um, very similar to the one predicted by the model that we saw before. So we can have either, depending on the limbs on the fold that we found ourselves, we could have shallowing or steepening. It's very interesting that this um, problem is um, higher. When we have a, a pusher, a compression, let's say, that is not parallel to the declination. So it's affecting the shape of the distribution a lot more, but more importantly, we don't have an elongation that is neither parallel nor perpendicular to the average declination, but it's crooked. And you can see that from here. So the ellipticity is reflecting the shape of the distribution. And that, because that's what we expect either from the model or for uh, data that are just affected by inclination flattening, either parallel or perpendicular. When it's not, there is clearly something else, something else affecting the data. After that, okay, we decided to work on the generator, the simulated data set to see something a bit more realistic. In the first case, we did, we applied again, just a, a pure shear without tilting, which is not entirely realistic, I know, but is, uh, it shows very well how the shape of the distribution change. And one of the things that we can see is that as soon as we have an angle between the, the compression, let's say, and the declination, the directions immediately jump into distribution shapes that are not acceptable. So they don't go, we have some situation where we can have something that is falling into this sedimentary kind of um, state. So inclination flattening state, but mm, in most of the case, when you have an angle, not even that one, there's a few degrees, you jump straight to directions, distribution that are not reliable. Uh, but we know that it's not entirely realistic. So we decided to do just for two uh, distribution, 10 degrees of uh, paleo latitude simulation, simulated latitude and 40 degrees, the series of events that could, could happen in reality. So we apply first a complex um, compaction flattening of 0 0.6, I didn't put it here, but so the standard, let's say, uh, sedimentary flattening. And then the possible weak cleavage and strong cleavage in both limbs of the fold and see what happened. And these, the, the red and the pink um, ellipses are the original distribution that lie on the expected. And we can see that when we are, so here, we can now go through all the diagrams unfortunately, but we can see basically this is the weak cleavage state, the strong cleavage state, the front limb, and the back thing. And they all create different uh, situations. But uh, yeah, we could say that when we apply str um, like strong deformation, they generally jump over to the situation that is not possible to correct anymore. And this is a lot stronger, again, when we apply um, stress, let's say a finite strain that is not parallel to the declination, which is a very likely situation, I would say. And all the distribution you can say, you can see they jump immediately to shapes that are not realistic with this model. I'm talking about this model. And one of the thing is, again, the elongation is crooked. So it's not, uh, it's not parallel to the declination as we would expect. So this could be also used as a reliable, uh, reliability index. So the, the, the elongation in this diagram is represented by the dotted circle, where in some cases, like for example, is passing through the center and that will be uh, parallel with the declination. Some other cases, not clearly. 
So going back to our data, can we apply this kind of uh, theory to our data? So what we did is just, so uh, we, had, we say we had 88 direction, which is not a lot. It's a reasonable number, but it's not like, um, the problem is they wanna calculate confidence, confidence margin. And the only way, at least the one I know is about bootstrap, using bootstrap. And we can see that this is a 90% confident boundary. It's quite wide, but still um, from the complete data set, we also filter some direction that they had some criteria. I can, yeah, can show you maybe later if you want. So it's mostly two about two minutes the, left. Yeah, two yeah, I'm done. Left. I'm done. Uh, yeah, and what we see is the uh, the complete data set. It looks reliable. If we feel that the data is a bit less reliable, and then we try using the direction from the uh, magnetic susceptibility tensor to unstrain the direction to see what happens if we apply uh, an unstrained technique to this direction. And what what we see is that we enter the condition of elongation parallel to the declination with very similar result. But still we are far from the expected uh, inclination, which is this one. So um, final remarks. We're still in a pickle about this direction because we, we are more inclined to consider the, the direction not reliable because of the AMS measurement. Something that I want to outline, without the anisotropic magnetic susceptibility, this data set will look reliable. So that's something that should be always presented when we use the direction for paleogeographic reconstruction. And that should be done together with adequate, um, with a, like a proper number of direction, normally a hundred, it's considered. And some other standard reliability tests like the usual fault test. And, and we recommend also to you to do also the distribution shape analysis. And with New Caledonia, uh, it's probably we need more data from the area because all the data are rotated. So yeah, they are probably more correct this one, even if they are rotated, but we are still in a situation where there's no data from the area. And what about the limitation of this method? You need a lot of direction to have nice confidence margin. And we actually don't know, I think, if this model is valid always so um, that's it i always finish with a picture from new caledonia oh thank Thanks. you very much has anyone got any questions yeah go for it hi uh, that was great talk thanks um I was wondering, there's, I, I've also had some, some strange inclinations in the Eocene, and I think they're reported for many parts in the, in the Tethium belt. Do you think that maybe it has something to do with that? My inclinations are always very shallow, and they're in volcanic rocks, and I think they find them from, uh, from Spain all the way to the east. I was wondering if you have any idea? Uh, so you may... Oh. I have a kind of blood memory in the past. There read some paper that they say in the in the some part of the Cenozoic maybe the field was not that polar. At least yeah, I think there's a paper of Westfall and also of Cogne that um, speculate about this. But I, yeah, yeah, because this thing is quite new. So it's uh, yeah, it, it would be interesting to check that. I have, I have no answer right now. So yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs>